Um, today we're going to explore some ideas about um, energy and what uh, gives us energy and what takes energy um, in order to help us have a bit more momentum in our daily life and a bit more, um, yeah, just vitality, joy, that kind of thing. Um, because sometimes if you're uh, home all day or if you're not exercising in the same way as usual or as much as usual or, you know, just the pressure of what's happening right now can make us a bit low energy. So we're just going to investigate a little bit about that and see if we can unblock some of the places where we're stuck. So just uh, start for a second by connecting with your own kind of internal motivation for doing meditation practice for your own development and peace of mind. And so that development and peace of mind can have a positive impact on the people around you. Just framing that motivation to yourself. Why am I doing this? And then shift your focus to the breath. And as you watch the breath, just choose not to follow the different distractions. Keep coming back. With every breath, choosing and re-choosing the present. And so now just consciously shift the mind from single pointedness to analysis. And what we're going to analyze is what are the things in life right now that seem to be taking energy? First, starting physically. So physically, what are the things that make you tired or worn out or heavy? Try to list them to yourself objectively like a scientist making observations without letting the fact of them bring you down. It's just a very gentle assessment. What physically is hard right now? Thank you. 
And then mentally, what's taking up a lot of mental space? What seems to be draining in the way that you're thinking or the things that you're worried about? Or even certain activities that you're doing that might actually be wearing you out? Just very gently check in. What is making you tired? And then consciously open your focus outward and think of what is difficult for me, what is probably the same for others. Maybe the specific details are a bit different, but what do I have in common with the other people around me in my life in terms of what is difficult and makes me tired or heavy? What might be in common with all of us? And so just let that knowledge of others and yourself reawaken your compassion. Thinking may all sentient beings, myself and others, be free of their suffering. And come back to the breath. And as you watch the breath, you think on the in-breath, may I be well and happy. And on the out-breath, May all others be well and happy. Breathing in, nourishing yourself. Breathing out, nourishing others.
and gently relax your attention. Okay. And so um, sometimes it's a, a little bit nervous making to um, identify what's a bit difficult. Um, it's like it's inviting it or something like that, or it can bring us down. But if we never really pull it in front of us and ask questions of it, we might not notice that there's places where we can unlock and actually change the pattern. So, um, so there are things that are normal to make us fatigued in life. And then there are extra things because there's extra pressure right now. And so um, sometimes it's the same old things that always are difficult, but they're just amplified because of the situation. Um, and so what we want to do is that whenever we're looking at our own difficulties, to not immediately jump to all of the solutions or all of the reasons why I should be better than this by now or all of the, um, the solutions we know from psychology or Buddhism or anything like that, but to just take a minute and say, that is hard. That is hard that that's happening physically. That is hard that that's happening mentally. And just kind of like give yourself a few beats, you know? Give yourself a few moments of just, that is hard. And that's um, something I wish wasn't happening. And then to move on to how can I reframe it? How can I use strategies to relieve it? How can I remember that everyone else is experiencing similar things and feel connected to them? So, you know, so if you jump over the step of what's going on for me, then your ability to release your own stress and to connect with others is going to be more fragile and less authentic. Um, when you speak to people about what you'd like to help with, it's not going to have the ring of truth. You know, it's going to feel a little bit disconnected and inauthentic because they will feel that you're not really in it with them in the same way. So, so I think it's really important to be in touch with your own struggle without falling into the story of your own struggle. Yeah, without kind of investing all sorts of intention and meaning into your own struggle and then getting lost in it. But to touch it, though, yeah, not always jump over it, not uh, disassociate from it, but just kind of sit in the middle of it and wish yourself well. I think it's a really important piece because some of what makes us tired mentally is blocking our worries. We have our worries and then we're trying to block them. And we have our struggles and then we're trying to avoid them. If you kind of bring them in front of you, then it actually releases some of the resistance. So this is an interesting thing to explore. It seems like uh, you don't want to give your difficulties too much attention because it'll make them bigger, but actually blocking them wears you out. So there's a lot of blocking energy in our daily life that actually um, robs us of some vitality. So if we can catch that, immediately you've got a, a, a lot more energy open up for you in your day. And one of the big things in Buddhism we talk about um, kind of robs us of um, momentum, uh, robs us of energy, is um, procrastination or putting off. Putting off a big thing or an important thing and doing a small thing instead all of the energy of justifying why you're putting off the big thing, whatever it is, or why you're putting off the important thing, whatever it is, that putting off mental energy wears you out. Yeah? So it's not about it being a good person or a bad person or an efficient person or an inefficient person. It's noticing that when you procrastinate, when you put off what is important to you, that actually steals a little bit of your peace. Yeah, sometimes it's necessary. Sometimes we have to do it. But when it's just this kind of default pattern of I'll get to it later, I'll get to it later, it kind of rests in the background of our mind and half grabs our attention, which means our attention on what we're doing is less than it could be. And it's harder to focus. So, so don't make it a moral issue, make it a strategic issue. 
that if I want to be more efficient in the day, I need to sit with what I'm putting off and name it and give it a plan so I can let it go or do it let it go or do it. So what can I do to kind of get it off eating the back of my mind? Um, and another one is, you know, to give us energy is to remember what is your point in life? What is your meaning in life? Not the meaning in life, but what is your meaning in life? And keeping the big picture forefront means that the small things don't affect you as much. If it's just become the walls of your house and the computer screen in front of you, you know, everything becomes a little bit too intense and all of the small things in that small space become very important. And the things of today become very important. But if the, the mind is stretched to what is my purpose in life, what is my meaning in life, then those small things fall into their correct perspective and there's not so much tension around them. So for example, we might think the purpose of my life is to relieve suffering wherever, however I can. My purpose is to relieve suffering, or my purpose is to bring happiness wherever and however I can. Whether I'm effective or not, whether I know what I'm doing or not, is secondary. Yeah, but the primary pivot point is compassion and love. Yeah, so if the primary, you know, sort of orientation of your life is compassion and love, then the most ordinary of days can go through that filtration system or go through that orientation and you can feel like you've had quite a satisfying day. Days that feel like a waste are tiring also. Yeah, either days that feel like a waste because you didn't accomplish all that you meant to accomplish or you did tons and tons of things, lots of busy work, but it just didn't feel connected and meaningful. Yeah, but if you're first directing everything in your day through the lens of compassion and loving kindness, then whether you're quote productive or quote non-productive becomes quite incidental because it's all about the path to opening the heart. So if you had a quiet day at home that was a day off and, you know, you went for a walk and you smiled at your neighbors, um, that can be quite a nice enriching experience. But if you think, I have to go outside and go for a walk, I have to get exercise because I'm inside all day, and you put this kind of tightness and this tension on it, you might see your neighbors and you feel sort of suspicious and paranoid and don't breathe on me, you know, or you might not feel as connected to your fellow man. So this very thing that's supposed to give you life winds up being one more stressor. So, so keeping this big picture mentality, um, in Buddhism we call it armor-like joyous effort. You're armoring yourself with your ideals or you're protecting yourself or imbuing yourself with what is important and meaningful to you before you go out and do anything else. So it's, it's like it's a protection because if your point is compassion, you can bring compassion to anything, even if you're by yourself. Who are you compassionate to? Well, yourself then, yeah? Or anyone you hear around you or any little being that comes into your house, you know? And it can be very um, rich, a rich life, a rich sort of um, happy, meaningful, connected life. So a lot of what makes us tired is lack of meaning. And it doesn't have to be the contents. The contents could be fine and good work that you've always valued and, you know, think it's important. But once you start to lose connection and meaning from it, then it wears you out. So it might seem, I don't know, artificial to stop and remember your motivation for doing something. But actually to stop and remember your motivation can breathe life back into it. So then this good work that you already are doing is revived. It gets its life back. And also you can start to let go of your expectations of outcomes. Um, I'm sure lots of us are working with our computer right now and there's um, hiccups in the internet, right? Or audio distortions or um, not clear screens or various, you know, just difficulties logistically. 
And you might think I'm online doing this class in order to convey information and or in order to have a session with my patient or a session with my client. And I want to help them get through this and this and this. Now, if you go in with this kind of hard set agenda, then if the computer difficulties are coming up, then they really feel like obstacles. But if you orient yourself with love and compassion, these same obstacles are just part of the whole path. And you think, how can I bring compassion to the fact that we're having this communication obstacle or that communication obstacle, just as I would if we were face to face and not communicating for some reason. You know, I'm bringing the whole sphere of everything into compassion and love. So what's the compassionate way to deal with this? What's the humorous way to deal with this, to lighten it? You know, what's the loving way to cope with this? Rather than feeling like everything is an obstacle, you know, and that I don't like working in this way. I like to work in this way. I don't like to do this. I like to do this. And we have all this kind of grrr, sort of irritation. Um, and then we're trying to be sweet and patient and it's fine. We're lucky. We're, you know, financially stable enough to work from home. We're so fortunate. We don't live in a developing country. We're so fortunate. We're so fortunate. And we can become kind of guilty for feeling grumpy. Yeah, guilty for feeling grumpy because we have it so good and so many other places in the world have it so bad. Instead of doing that whole dance um, of feeling guilty about your irritation, address your irritation and see if you can bring some compassion to it by, first of all, this is not what I wanted to happen. Second of all, we are all in it together. Third, there's a way to make it useful and bring it into the sphere of my giant motivation of compassion and love. And now it's not a problem. But you can't skip over the steps, even though intellectually you know where you're going, right? Intellectually, you know you're going to compassion and love is the point of my life. But if you jump straight to it without acknowledging what is happening is not what I want to be happening, it won't work. Yeah, you have to be with that first. So um, resistance to what is, is an energy sucker. Yeah, resistance to what is. Anytime you can make something come into a feeling of voluntary, energy frees up. Does that make sense? Do you have some thoughts about this? Some objections or ideas? Yeah, what gives, gives us some life. I guess for me, um, thank you for this meditation. It was really helpful to realize the difference between, um, well, I guess what, what we think would give us energy or what has been ta maybe taken from us for those of us that are living with restricted movement and quarantines and lockdowns. So that chance to go for a walk and experience, you know, your neighborhood and, and be able to walk around your town or your city. Um, but if the emotional or mental energy that we're taking with us into that walk isn't really connected to that wider, you know, kind of aim that we have, then it doesn't matter about the physical kind of number of steps that you take that you would record on your iPhone or your Fitbit, um, because you aren't getting energy from that. It's how, it's how we're walking. So that was really great. Thanks. It's, it's always the motivation, isn't it? It's always the motivation you're bringing to something which makes it useful or not useful or effective or ineffective. And yet we get lost in the activity itself and think this is a positive activity or this is a healthy activity. Therefore it should make me happy or make me healthy. And it's only gonna make you happy and healthy if you're bringing the right motivation to it. Um, you know, how sometimes you can be eating very healthy, good food, but if you're full of stress, it's still not gonna digest nicely. You know, you can make perfect, beautiful food into poison for yourself. You know, you can make meaningful, beautiful, important work 
into some heavy, hard thing, you know? So, so kind of to free yourself back up to remember that we're incredibly fortunate to have meaningful work, first of all, and to have the space to consider how to make life even more meaningful. How can I be kinder in my family? How can I be more conscious in my neighborhood? These are not burdens. These are, you know, amazing gifts to be able to even have the mental space to consider because we're lucky enough to have enough food to eat and have somewhere to live. So, you know, to just even have the mental space to consider how to broaden my focus is a huge gift. And thinking of it that way could, again, trigger a whole guilt spiral if you're not using it right, you know? So it's like we have this crazy way of looking at all of the really amazing things we have in our life where we either feel entitled to them because we worked hard and we deserve it or we feel like we don't deserve it and we need to live up to it and we feel guilty for having it you know we can kind of go back and forth between like entitlement and deprivation and whatever kind of dance and none of that is useful really Right, what's useful is to think, how do I use whatever is in front of me to enact my path? Which might mean you need to sit a little bit with what is my path again. You might have known 20 years ago and now it sort of just becomes so normal you don't think about it anymore. But to come back to the purpose of my life is what? What gives me meaning is what? Connection comes from what? And to rename those things for yourself, even when you already know them, it gives them their power back and it brings them forefront into your life. And then that leads to a more energized and happy life. Yeah. So, you know, there's a lot of ways um, to build energy in Buddhism. Another is to think, um, if I have the mentality of I will do my positive work even if it's alone, then you usually wind up getting a lot of support. If you go into an activity thinking, I'll only do it if I get a lot of support, you'll often have no support. So it's an interesting way of thinking because um, we all know what kind of neediness does to the people when someone is very needy and hungry and craving attention and support that's the opposite of what they get it almost creates like a you know sort of a, a field around them that makes people repulsed whereas when people feel very self-sufficient and very um, self-motivated then people kind of want to support them do you know how this can happen and so for us when we're needing some support First of all, of course, that's natural and normal, but being hungry for it and thinking that I can only work if I get a certain kind of validation and a certain kind of, you know, boost, then we're kind of setting ourselves up to feel even more deprived. If you think the work is important enough that I will do it regardless if people validate me, support me, notice me, I'm going to do it because it's worth doing. That's a good enough reason. Then you often get a lot of support, right? It's counterintuitive. But even if you don't get support, you are giving yourself your own momentum because you've reminded yourself that you do what you do because it's worth doing. And if it's not worth doing, that becomes more obvious to you and you might change your priorities a little bit. But, you know, for us in supportive roles, sometimes we look around looking for support. You know, we're supporting all day. Where is our support? Could someone make me dinner? Whatever, right? Which is normal and natural. But as soon as you get that kind of hungry craving, what about me? It's a sign that the focus is imploded. Yeah, and when the focus implodes, you start to get that real sad, heavy, grumpy state. Yeah. And so it's not to say that you don't deserve support. Of course you do. We all do. It's not to say it's not fair to ask for it. Of course you can ask for it. It's about the energy you're transmitting. Yeah, so if you're transmitting the what about me, what about me energy, you're going to really put people off, <laughs> right? And you see this in your patients all the time, I'm sure. Um, but as soon as you have kind of a mentality of, I will do this by myself alone if I need to, because it is good to do. 
that it, that gives its own charge and it also brings added support to it because people want to be a part of something positive so if you're something positive people naturally want to support that yeah so it's it's a it's a delicate dance um and you know when are we being assertive and when are we being afflicted you know this these are things that only really you know but we're being afflicted is usually signified by an agitation in the mind. When we're being assertive, we're usually calm, cool, collected. Yeah? And you can just speak what is true for you in that moment with fewer expectations, see how it lands. The conversation is collaborative or a negotiation. When it's coming from an affliction, there is this agitation and it also makes it more likely that you're going to bring in stuff from the past to power your argument. Yeah, that you'll say, hey, I didn't get supported today. I really needed support today and yesterday and last year and that one time and you bring in all this other incidental stuff and the conversation becomes very charged with all of your, you know, decades of resentment. So, you know, rather than do that, which we know is not effective, to come back to, is what I'm doing what I want to be doing? Is what I'm doing what I want to be doing? And often the answer is yes, we've just gotten a bit burned out because we have forgotten some of the priorities and the ways of managing it. Yeah, or we've forgotten some of the things that we need to sustain it and we need to recalibrate. But if you start with, is what I'm doing what I want to be doing, you give your power back and then you don't feel like you're being depleted constantly because this is what you chose. But you can see how it's delicate and it would be easy to misunderstand this and use it as one more kind of tool to beat yourself up with. But all, all of this kind of conversation is under the joyous effort category in the Buddhist teachings. And it's basically, how do you give yourself back your energy? How do you give yourself back your power? Yeah, because negative states of mind take energy and take power. It's not a moral issue of bad and good. It's a energy issue of what takes and gives. Do you have questions? Okay, do you want to do another um, meditation? Yeah, well, giving, a giving energy meditation. Okay, so just uh, get yourself back into a good position. Nice straight back. And again, come back to the idea that the reason for meditating is in order to connect with and develop peace so that we can bring out the peaceful aspects in others so that we can soothe their agitation as well. But it needs to start with my own peace. And so I'll start by touching that in the simplest of ways, which is to come to the present moment by using the breath as an anchor. And so shift your focus back to the breath. You can see each breath as a chance to regroup, to recenter.
Breathing without controlling the breath. Breathing without judging the breath. The thoughts will come and go, but they are not your main interest. Just keep returning front and center to your own breath. And then invite this armor or this protection, this joy that comes from connection to your ideals, to your meaning and purpose. And so just articulate for yourself, what does give me meaning in my life? Whether it's work or activities or family, whether it's ideals or a spiritual path, Just name them to yourselves, revive them. Try to feel those ideals imbuing your whole body and mind, like an armor or protection, protected by purpose, connected to meaning. Even if it's just one word, like compassion or peace. And then take that ideal and imagine yourself in a later part of today an activity you know is coming up today, even if it's just a meal or some job, session. And just imagine bringing yourself imbued with that strong motivation to that activity. with your heart open in this way, what different obstacles might just disappear 
the different things that might irritate you or bother you normally when you do this activity? How might they just dissolve? And now think about the different things in your life that might pull you or distract you from that meaning and purpose. The things you might put off and distract yourself from or with, or the different ways you become busy in order to avoid something more important. But just ask yourself, what pulls me away from remembering my deeper motivation or my deeper purpose? What are my common distractions? And then imagine bringing that armor-like joyous effort to those common distractions. How can your greater meaning interrupt your tendency towards those distractions or obstacles? You notice yourself putting off something important or you notice yourself becoming busy with something in order to avoid something more important. but you catch yourself, what would that look like to catch yourself? You've done it before, just think of how it might be in the future. And so just feel like your own wisdom has been revived and reawakened. The ways you already know, the priorities you already care about, revived and forefront. And then imagine that there's a brilliant green light above the crown of your head which represents energy, action, protection. If you have a connection with the Buddhist path, you can put the Buddha Tara in the center of it. She is radiant green with one foot out, ready to leap to the aid of sentient beings. And this green energetic light flows down through the crown of your head, filling you up with compassionate action, with energy and protection. 
to give you the strength and momentum you need to awaken the strength and momentum you already have. Brilliant, vital green light filling every part of your body. Soothing your mind. And you become so full with this green energy that it radiates out from you in all directions, bringing protection and vitality to all the people in your life one by one, stretching further and further out to all And if it feels comfortable, you can add the mantra of Tara to this visualization of light going out. Om Tare Tu Tare Tu Re Soha Om Tare Tu Tare Tu Re Soha Om Tare Tu Tare Tu Re Soha Om Tare Tutare to re so ha. Om tare. 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 Tu tare tu re so ha. Om tare. Tu tare tu re so ha. Imagine the energy of the mantra and light continue to radiate out. Just as the mantra and light continue to fill you up from above. Filling up and sending out. And imagine the whole planet bathed in radiant green light. And as you gently release the visualization, imagine that the energy of it continues 
energy flowing into you, energy flowing out of you. Like an unending spring. And then gently relax your attention. Hey, <clears throat> thanks everybody. Um, do you have any, any questions or um, suggestions for topics for next time that you'd like to bring forward? Uh, I would like to ask, um, I think about the junction between the compassion and motivation to change it. I have a lot of time in this uh, point of my life to decide it, to take the things or to go, I have to fight, not fight, but something uh, make, to get out from this feeling. The, the junction between um, uh, wanting to develop compassion and resistance to it? Uh, no, if I, if I have compassion, maybe I'm angry now. So mm. to, to accept this feeling or to say, no, this is the time to see the things over it, that, like you say. Mm. Yeah, and how, how, to, how to do that day by day when our energy changes day to day and our uh, yeah. meal changes day to day. I, I think that, um, you know, it gets strengthened by thought during quiet times. All of our energies can get strengthened if we think about them on purpose when things are not as difficult. Rather than when things aren't difficult to just kind of relax and enjoy it, of course relax and enjoy it, but use the fact that you can relax and enjoy some space to come back to what you've decided is important for the rest of our lives. Um, and use that as the training ground mm -hmm. because then when you come to these junctions, your practice kicks in okay. much more easily. So to try and like insert the new habit in the middle of intensity is very hard. Yeah. But if you can um, bring practice to the quiet times, then the next time it's intense, you have a little bit more space to choose. Mm -hmm. You know, so you give yourself more space to choose by going back over the benefits of compassion, the disadvantages of when you've let yourself go from it. You know, you do some analysis when it's not too confronting, when it's a quiet time without too much drama, because it does then give you this will that then kicks in. Um, and you can really use your memories actively, you know, go through your memories and remember how much more beautiful and enriched life was when you've been connected to your heart. And just remember that on purpose, you know, just how beautiful those days, how beautiful those moments when you opened out again, you know, and then think how difficult those days when you shut down and closed the heart and made it, what about me? And how really rough that was for you. Of course, for everyone else, they would prefer you to be the friendly one, but it was hor horrible for you to close down. But in that moment of closing down, it felt so necessary. It felt so logical. It felt like it was looking after yourself when it did the opposite, when it actually isolated you and made you cut off from the people you love. So if you can have those conversations with yourself just quietly, you know, in your favorite chair, looking out the window with a cup of tea or a cup of coffee and just like go back over your wisdom and don't lose the lessons of your life. You know, because we've learned so much already in our life, but then it, we just get distracted and we forget. So it's like you have to remember your lessons on purpose to make them more powerful and more driving forces in your life. Um, and then you don't expect too much of yourself in the moment of truth in these junction points. Yeah. As you say. Hey, but you'll notice that your path kicks in more easily because mm -hmm. these thoughts are already forefront. 
you know, because they're already the way you're reorienting your life. They kick in more and more easily. So it's just a skill, you know, it's just a skill. We, we shouldn't feel like we need to be naturals, you know, it, it develops over time. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I, yeah, other thoughts? Can I ask, I have a question. First, thank you for a beautiful meditation very contemporary medita meditation. Um, when you make the, um, the path through uh, four stages to uh, um, have a look in the situation, the first thing that you say, uh, I didn't want it to happen. And I have a question about it because it's, um, it's conflictual. Like if I see the, state, the situation now, I can see that a lot of people wanted this situation. Not in this way, but they want it. So it's very hard to say, I didn't want it. I want to say, uh, I'm responsible for it. I want to say, uh, I wanted it uh, in some way. So if you can say something about it. Yeah, uh, it, it's not that we shouldn't reframe and say, you know, there are positive aspects about everything. It's that we're acknowledging our own discomfort before we move on to something higher or deeper or vaster. We're saying, okay, maybe if personally, I quite like that everyone is not driving so much and that the pollution is going down and that we're ex re-examining our priorities and we're being less consumptive. I love this. I don't like that people are sick. I don't like that the government's being weird and I'm not totally sure what's going on behind the scenes and that is sort of troubling. But generally, I'm quite happy to be home by myself with um, less pollution. That's happening. But what, I, what I'm acknowledging first is my discomfort of what I didn't want to happen was stress. I didn't want stress and I'm experiencing stress. If we jump to how do I reframe, reframe this situation to something positive before we acknowledge that we're having a little bit of reaction to it, then we kind of miss a kernel of the wisdom of the experience. You know, so to go, okay, what I didn't want was the paranoia around me. What I didn't want was people sick. What I didn't want was my own, you know, confusion about what's really going on. I didn't want any of that. Yeah. And that knowing is a pathway to empathy. That means that I'm immediately able to connect to other people who are feeling similar things. And I'm not going to immediately jump to reframing their experience when they're telling me about their worries. I'll be able to much more hold the space for them and listen to them completely and be really present with them. Because I'm not jumping to yes, but, yes, but solutions. Look at it this way, look at it this way. You know, I'm not gonna, be one of those people that crowds their stress with solutions that make them more stressed. You know, if I can be with my own discomfort, it's a pathway of empathy. So, um, so it's just, it can all happen in one second, right? You can go from, I didn't want to be uncomfortable. I can reframe this in a way that makes me comfortable. I can, you know, boom, 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 just very quickly go through all these stages, but we don't want to jump over the, the immediate reaction. Okay, I didn't mean this. I meant like uh, uh, maybe we create it to develop ourselves. Like to, no, it's not that I didn't want it, of course. Like even if it's a not, I don't like it. Okay, I don't like it. But yeah, um, yeah. I take responsible to my path of development. It's yeah, yeah, there yeah. in my way. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Good. Yeah, it's what I mean. It's just that there's a preliminary step of acknowledgement. Yeah, it's, it's a, and it doesn't sound like you missed that step. It just sounds like you're very familiar with moving on to the higher steps. It's just, have you ever met the sort of folks who say, oh, it's all good. It's all good. They say mm -hmm. this a lot in New Zealand, don't they, Eleanor? It's all good should be fine. And it's, it's exasperating, right? Because you're like, no, it's not. There are people starving in Yemen right now. It's not all good. You know, it's not all good. There, you know, there's people who died down the road. Like, it's not all good. Be with that. And then frame it, you know, because if you jump that point, it really means a lot. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. 
So um, yeah, just gently, but it, it's a, a lot of what this conversation about is, is noticing resistance and then releasing resistance because resistance is what makes us tired and makes us less efficient. So to pretend that there isn't resistance we don't wanna do, we first sit with what am I resisting? And even in looking at that sometimes is enough for it to just release. Sometimes just noticing it, it will release. But there's a lot of just little things, something so simple, like think about resistance to doing the dishes. You know, I have resistance to doing the dishes. I know I need to do them, I'm going to do them, but there's like part of your mind putting it off, putting it off, you know, for whatever reason. It's normal and human and you don't have to overthink it. But if you pull it forefront and decide this is a break, yeah? Doing the dishes is a break from this hard thing I have to do afterwards and this other thing I have to do afterwards. And you think, oh, how nice to just do something physical and finite. And when it's done, it's done. And it has obvious need, you know? So much of our work is ambiguous and was that helpful or wasn't it helpful? The dishes need to be done. That I can be certain of. How wonderful, you know? And then you've reframed it in such a way that then you enjoy the experience. But you first kind of acknowledge, I don't really feel like it. I don't feel like it. I don't want to. <laughs> but, it, you know, eating you in the back of your mind was costing a little bit of energy, not anything that significant, but the putting off eats you and the resistance, you know, eats that energy. So any, any version of that in our life, if we can just notice, it can unlock. Yeah. And if it's not unlocking just by noticing, then we try to bring some logic and some memory to and just kind of unpack why is it why is it that we're reacting this way loosens everything up um, and you can even say i'm going to treat today like an experiment and i'm not going to change anything today i'm not going to change anything today what i'm going to do is just watch myself and what i say to myself mm. when i do everything today and just kind of explore that you know it's interesting yeah. yeah, I don't know. Other, other thoughts? I hope I didn't give you too much all at once. Mm -hmm. It's probably parallel to ways that you already know how to think. So um, if you have um, suggestions for topics that you'd like to do um, or uh, more of this, less of that, whatever, we can try and work with that. So just let uh, Eleanor or Claudia know and um, have a lovely rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you. And, um, Thanks, guys. Thank you.